Okay, so I have my dummy class here, and I want to show you a couple of different ways to create arrays. We said that one way we could create it is using the shortcut operator. So I said we could do this. So here you can see this is one way I can create an array. And now if I wanted to print the first item in the array, I could go like this. Let's just run this. And you can see this works fine. Now, one thing I have to warn you about, this shortcut operator can only be used when you declare the array. So that means that if you're going to declare an array and initialize it with the shortcut operator, it has to be on the same line. So therefore, you can't do this. You can't go like this and then later on come along and say, oh, now I want to initialize it. This you see, it'll create a compiler error. So that's not going to work. You see that, right? So if you use the shortcut operator, it can only be used, it can only be used on the same line as the declaration. So I'm going to just comment this out for a second and show you the other way to clear, declare and initialize an array. I, I can declare it the old fashioned way. I can go double and then later on I can allocate the memory for it. I can go points equals new double. How many did I have here? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five like that. Now, if I want to initialize this array, I have to initialize it piece by piece. So I go points sub zero equals 12.3. And now I'm just going to go ahead and initialize the other elements. And now if I was to compile and run this, I would get the same result. You can see it comes up with the same answer. Now here, this is called declaration. This is memory allocation. And then this next part here, this is initialization. Now I should mention that even after this execution, the memory is actually initialized to another value can anyone guess when I first create the array, what would the Java virtual machine set the values to in the array? Yes, Mr. Pandali, what do you think? Yes, in this case, it would set everything to 0, 0.0. If it was integers, it would be 0. And if it was Boolean, it would be false. OK, so false is like 0. OK, so we just have these two different ways. This is the shortcut operator, and then this is the uh, the normal way. I should also mention that I've done this memory allocation declaration on two lines. You can also do it on a single line. And this is also possible. OK, so you can declare and initialize on the same line. Later on, when we get into how to use arrays inside classes, I'll show you the difference of what when we use a single line to do it and when we use separate lines to allocate memory and to declare it. But for now, all you need to know is that you can declare an array this way, you can declare an array this way, or you can declare an array with the declaration and the memory allocation being separate lines. So I think I've given you the basics of the array now. So what I'm going to ask you to do now is go over to a browser, coding bat, and these are the problems that are due next class. And I'm going to give you a good 10 minutes to get started. I'm going to do the first two with you, and then I'm going to ask you to do 18 more of them. It's OK if you don't finish today, just finish it for homework. Let's look at this one. I'm not logged in right now, but make sure you're logged in before you start work today. And this one is called first, la uh, first last six, and it returns true if the first element or the last element is a six. So I'm going to say if something return true if something else return true and if I get down here I will return false so what I'd like you to do is work with your partner or by yourself figure out what to replace this with so that this will work as required Mr. Oris Bayev, sir, can you help me with the first one? How can I ask it if the first element is a six? Sir, first last six is the name of the method. I need to ask it about the array. Sir, this is the index of the last element of the array. I want to access the first element in the array. 
So I need to tell it that I want the element of the array. So what do I write here? Okay. Like that. And now I want to do a similar thing for the last element of the array. Uh, Mr. Angad, sir, what do I put here? Sir, the name of the array is not int. Okay. Okay, and that is the solution to the first one. Let's go on to the next one. And this one asks, is the first one the same as the last one? So this is even easier. I don't even need this else, but I'll just leave it in there. And so here I just go nums sub zero. Uh, this one is an empty array. So I need to guard against an empty array. That's called an edge case. So how am I going to check the length to see if it's zero? And what do I want to return if it is? I think I want to return false if it's empty. And how can I figure out if the length is zero? Mr. Mason? Uh, 